Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you all for joining. I extend a warm welcome to you all uh, to this webinar series on uh, Ayurveda biology. Uh, this is the fourth webinar series in this year's uh, uh, 2023 uh, uh, years uh, series. And today uh, we have uh, Dr. Yadu Narayanan Moose from Vaidrandam group with us. Uh, Dr. Yadu is an Ayurvedic physician, completed his BAMS and MD in Kayachigil, sir. He is uh, hailing from a well-known family of Ayurvedic practitioners in Kerala, Vaidhiratnam. And uh, this family had, in fact, played an important role in uh, both preserving and popularizing the uh, Kerala tradition of Ayurveda practices for almost last you know, 100 years or so. And uh, uh, Dr. Yadu uh, is a torchbearer of this great tradition. And he is currently the uh, executive director of Vaidhiratnam. And as all of us may be knowing that the firm that is uh, involved in uh, research, academics, as well as uh, industrial aspects of Ayurveda. So we believe uh, he is one of the most uh, appropriate person to talk about uh, the uh, you know uh, 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 role of Ayurveda biology uh, the uh, uh, in uh, industry and clinical research. And as I can see that his uh, uh, title is Ray of Hope. That's a very uh, uh, catching title. Thank you for uh, that uh, uh, title. So on behalf of uh, TDU and uh, all this audience, I extend a warm welcome to uh, Dr. Yadu. So before handing over to uh, Dr. Yadu, I just want to say that we want to keep this um, uh, session as kind of an interactive session. So I request all the participants uh, to uh, uh, actively participate in the uh, question and answer session uh, after that talk. Thank you once again. Uh, uh, welcome Dr. Yadu, uh, Yadu and uh, over to you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, one and all. Thank you. Thank you very much for your warm introduction, Dr. Vishnu Prasad. So uh, I'll be giving a brief introduction before sharing the uh, slides. Is that okay to stop the share and... Uh... Should I start? Yes. yes, yes, please, please. Yeah. So uh, it's my privilege and pleasure to be on this uh, platform you know, sharing few insights about Ayurveda biology and uh, probable prospects of the same uh, as far as uh, a stakeholder in Ayurveda is concerned. Um, to be frank, my exposure um, on Ayurveda biology as a technical system is limited. But at the same time, I have had some very meaningful conversations and discussions with uh, various scientists and doctors who are a part of uh, this uh, very innovative platform. And, you know, one thing I uh, realized with this is that uh, as a, I gave the title as a ray of hope, uh, this integration of Ayurveda with the modern biology has got a lot of potential. And uh, it seems that there are a lot of gaps that we see in multiple verticals of Ayurveda, like clinics, research, industry. And this integration has the potential uh, to be a stepping stone uh, in, you know, uh, closing the gaps. And it is with this uh, idea that I uh, try to approach uh, this presentation. And uh, it, uh, in fact, I had an opportunity to visit uh, the transdisciplinary university campus a couple of months back. And uh, with, during the interactions with the scientists over there, uh, it was an eye opener for me to understand the depth with which uh, the researchers are being happening with the help of you know, integration with uh, the other scientific, um, you know, uh, other sciences. And uh, in fact, it was an eye opener. And I started reading and understanding more about this Ayurveda biology, uh, to be frank, after that uh, visit. So uh, as, we, um, as we understand, uh, Ayurveda has got a lot of traditions and principles that people just follow blindly, or people just follow because it is time tested, or it has given uh, results over a large period of time. Uh, similarly, there are certain sets of principles or uh, practices that is now being analyzed with the help of modern understanding of human body, you know, biochemistry, molecular biology. And this attempt is happening in many places. And um, even we are doing uh, certain attempts in the same direction. And one thing that we have observed is whenever we try to integrate this two, there is a lot of uh, acceptance, which is uh, which we are receiving uh, from different parts when we try to collaborate the core concepts of Ayurveda without losing its core value, uh, trying to collaborate it with uh, the advanced uh, sciences. So whenever that attempt is happening, I know it will be same with uh, TDU also. 
um, on a global scale as well as uh, scientists from other sciences, they're showing a lot of interest to know Ayurveda uh, when it is being presented in such a format. So I think uh, when we look forward, it is very important to create that such an innovative platform uh, <clears throat> where the concepts of Ayurveda can be, uh, I won't say equated, uh, but it, it may be brought into a framework. Uh, where it becomes more easier for, um, you know, uh, scientists from different parts uh, of the sci scientific world to understand. And as you know, any research uh, that is happening in a scientific world, especially in a scientific world, a healthcare world, I mean, it will become uh, fruitful only when it is being translated into um, the end customer, be it a healthcare seeker or a researcher or uh, even a doctor. So uh, the concepts in Ayurveda, as well as the researchers happening today, I feel that needs to be taken into that level where it is converted into a service or a product or an awareness, or an awareness. that ultimately, um, hello? Yeah. Oh, uh, that, that, yeah, that ultimately bears a fruit. So what is missing here, uh, we feel, is that the concepts, core concepts, as well as the Ayurvedic uh, basic understanding when it has to be applied or when it has to be explained to a population who has lesser exposure to this kind of understanding, there is a huge gap and that gap can be filled only through proper awareness. And once this proper awareness is created, I mean, true awareness is created, gradually the system and the practices will become more popular. And that popularity is must when we look ahead for the growth of Ayurveda. And this is one core principle that I feel Ayurveda biology has a lot of potential in. So uh, we know that one thing is very certain that, you know, human body, it, it functions only in a certain way, right? Uh, we may be learning Ayurveda through it through Ayurveda. We may be learning it through molecular biology or the other systems, but body functions only in one way. And it is very important to understand that any science which can come close to that reality or any understanding which is closer to that reality has a chance to be more fruitful. So I didn't mean to say that Ayurveda is not close to reality, but the Ayurvedic concepts that we have learned, see what happens is um, any student who comes to learn Ayurveda, they learn this contemporary uh, modern biological understanding till the 12th standard, right? After that, they come and join for BAMS and they are exposed to a completely different way of understanding human body. And I feel sometimes that creates a, a disconnect. And um, the problem with uh, this is that if you look into the Ayurvedic understanding of body on those days, it is pretty clear that the only way to gain knowledge was through your five senses, right? What is visible, what is audible, or what is, you know, you communicate with that. But when it comes to the modern or the contemporary medical system, the biggest advantage is the invent of technology. See, with the help of technology, we are able to see what our eyes cannot see. With the advent of technology, we are able to hear what our ears cannot otherwise. So with this help of technology, this platform has been created in the modern biology, which is more closer to reality, the reality of how human body works. So I feel, it is a time, high time for us as Ayurveda doctors and Ayurveda well-wishers to connect this Ayurvedic concepts to reality or take these concepts of Ayurveda closer to the reality with the help of uh, this modern tools, technology, as well as the fields like Ayurveda biology. And with this, uh, I will just, uh, you know, uh, share a PPT which... Uh, through which I will try to explain how uh, this Ayurveda biology can be fruitful uh, in multiple ways uh, from the viewpoint of an Ayurvedic stakeholder. Uh, I hope it is uh, visible. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. So I, I gave the title a Ray of Hope uh, because just a second. Yeah, I gave this title a uh, ray of hope uh, because, you know, as I told earlier, um, for a new student who comes to Ayurveda, there is some disconnect happening when they try to learn the basics because they're exposed to a different way of understanding human body. And all of a sudden, this is a completely different system. So 
I believe that that disconnect, when it is not cleared or when it is not addressed in an early stage, it slowly grows into a mistrust. When I say mistrust, it's like you think that what you learn is not true or what you're going to apply is not true because you know the reality is little different. So that disconnect and mistrust is leading to lack of confidence among the Ayurvedic doctors, especially the young doctors, which is a reality. So when we look into the Ayurvedic youngster, young doctors who are coming out of the colleges, many times when we give these trainings and all, we see that they don't have the confidence to write a prescription or they don't have the confidence to interact with the patient. And the problem they face is they believe they cannot convince the patient what has gone wrong or what is their issue. So that lack of confidence due to this disconnect and mistrust is creating a very big gap as far as Ayurvedic theory and practice is considered. So I strongly believe that Ayurveda biology, this approach is very important as far as creating that bridge or bridging that gap which is happening between the theory and the practice. So hence I uh, put this title as a ray of hope. So uh, you know this is nothing but a fingerprint. We all know what is the significance of a fingerprint, right? Um, we may have very similar kind of fingerprints, but still it is unique to each. So all the scientists and doctors who are working in the field of Ayurveda biology, I'm sure will be aware that Ayurveda has got a unique fingerprint of its own, right? Which is more of a holistic systemic approach uh, with concepts, you know, see your body as a whole system. At the same time, the biological understanding, it has got its own significance. It has got its own unique fingerprint, wherein we have to take a reductionist approach sometimes. We have to understand the body in the basis of cells, bio biochemicals acting in the body. So both has got its own unique fingerprints. But this approach of Ayurveda biology, I hope, is going to create a unique fingerprint for Ayurveda, you know, in the sense an Ayurveda biology which has both the characters of innate characters of Ayurveda as well as biology. And uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, understanding Ayurveda biology and its probable effect in Ayurveda going ahead, I think these are the five critical areas that uh, we need to address or we are going to address, hopefully. One is conceptual redesigning or restructuring. So it's very clear that the students who are exposed to uh, this course of Ayurveda biology or this MSc life sciences, I think the core idea which is happening is the redesigning or restructuring of the concepts. When I say this redesigning or restructuring, uh, I, I mean the same concept of bringing the concepts closer to the reality. So I hope this is uh, one thing which is happening. And uh, next is contemporary application. When I say contemporary application, um, the concepts that which is redesigned with the help of this modern technology and understanding, it has to be applied in a way which is contemporary, right? That concept application should be in a contemporary way. Uh, then comes coherent communication. I feel this is one of the most significant aspects of uh, understanding the Ayurveda concepts with the light of modern understanding, coherent communication. So I'll just give an example which uh, happened an, a week back, you know, wherein uh, one of my friend uh, who has a hospital, uh, he there uh, a very difficult, a very rare case of muscular atrophy was treated successfully, and he can, he just in, uh, invited a couple of doctors to discuss about the same, uh, to present the case, and a very senior doctor, very senior doctor was presenting the case. He has treated it beautifully. He has just given all the basic, uh, I mean, understanding of Ayurveda in a very um, profound manner. He treated it very beautifully. And there was a French guy who was also a part of the audience. He's very interested in Ayurveda. So he was also invited to uh, understand about this. So when the presentation was happening, um, you know, he, he, as, as I said, the doctor explained it very beautifully. And the presentation finished. And this French guy, who is very, he's, he's a good, he's a well-wisher of Ayurveda, who's learning Ayurveda. He got a little irritated and he started asking a few questions to him. The reason was that, during the presentation, uh, the doctor told when the muscular atrophy, atrophy happens, that is when the mamsa kshaya is there, he told vayu from pakwa shaya moves and fills in there, creating a vada pragoda. So when that was explained, he was not ready to accept it. He was asking him questions like, why, how this happens? Why this happens? 
Right. And it led to a debate. And at last, uh, the doctor told that if you want to understand, you understand or else leave it. That is how it finished. So I gave this example here because communication is a very significant part, whether it is to the patient or whether it is to the you know researcher or whether it is to other scientists. If we are, whatever he explained, uh, saying that Mamsa Kshaya happens, Vada Koba happens, it's completely true and we understand it as Ayurveda doctors. But when you are explaining it to a person out of this Ayurvedic framework, it is very important to have a language which is acceptable or which is close to the reality. So I think coherent communication is very important. Then constructive criticism. You know, uh, this is one thing that I personally feel is going to be a big game changer as far as uh, Ayurveda going ahead is concerned. Through understanding body and the functions with the help of modern biology, cellular biology, I think we have a lot of opportunities to do a constructive criticism on the concepts of Ayurveda. And I believe that this constructive criticism will do only good to Ayurveda because there are certain concepts that we need to keep aside Right. So those opportunities are there as far as constructive criticism is concerned. And in the end, connecting the dots. See, let's say connecting the dots. You know, it's very important that uh, we understand the body, human body, the basic functions. When it comes to a disease, we understand the etiology, the symptom complexes, treatment principles and treatment. What happens? So to connect these dots, the, once again, this requirement is to understand body close to how it is really. So this is another avenue that I feel is very important. So uh, I'll just give you the example of a conceptual redesigning. See, uh, Vada is a concept which is very popular. We know very well what it is. So if you ask an Ayurvedic a student or Ayurvedic doctor, you know, there are multiple ways how he explains Vada. It could be like, you know, something that moves in the body or something which has a potential to move other particles in the body. Right. All this is Vada. Similarly, on a characteristic based, we say Tatra Yuksho Lekushida Khara Sukshmo Stalonila. That means a combination of these characters will result in something called Vada. So these are conceptual understanding of Vada. But is it necessary to do a research work or to, you know, to a certain extent in clinics to understand Vada? Is this necessary going ahead? I don't think it is necessary. It is enough. We need to create this connection between whatever systems in the body or whatever, you know, movements happening in the body that can be correlated with Vada, if not equated. So such a platform can be created with the help of modern biology. Similarly, coming to contemporary application, we know what are the functions of Vada. It's very clearly mentioned that, you know, Ulsaho, Chwasana, Ishwasa, Cheshta, Vega, Pravartane, all these are functions of Vada. So, when we say Uchwasa Nishwasa as a function of Vada, on a very basic level, we understand respiration. But is it limited to just the inspiration and expiration? No. It has control over the control center of breathing, right? The neurological plexus, which, you know, functions as a part of breathing. So all this understanding is very important to apply it on the contemporary scenario. Similarly with the pathology. Right. We say um, there is Chaya, Prakopa, or Kshaya of Vada. So this is like Karshya, Karshya, Ushna, Kamitva, Kampana, Shagrit, Grahan. All these symptoms are the pathology of Vada. Right. So it says a Shagrit, Graha, uh, which is uh, maybe equated or correlated to constipation. So constipation is a symptom when Vada increases. That is a basic understanding. But I think we need to go much deeper to understand which are the situations where constipation happens and what is the role of Vada in all those situations. So to take it into that realistic level, I think it is very important to adopt the knowledge systems like biology or biochemistry, cellular biology into our learning. Similarly, as I said, the coherent communication. See, uh, this is one very important question that uh, patients generally ask us or you know, they have an interest to know. What is this Pragirdi all about? So, you know, I personally had a way of explaining them about uh, Prakriti based on the symptoms and all, which is generally mentioned in the textbooks. But for the same purpose of uh, this seminar, uh, I went through this uh, article where IR genomics is explained connecting with uh, Prakriti. So I got a very different perspective of communicating this to the patient next time when they comes. So this is possible only because there was a conscious attempt uh, to understand 
based on the realistic body how this pragrati is uh, you know conceptualized or working similarly panchakarma you know patient asks how this panchakarma acts how the vasti acts is it beneficial is it just a gut clearance mechanism see all these questions we face as clinicians and uh, right now you know we are still in search of uh, knowledge to explain or to make them understand how this works so i think the mechanisms of panchakarma is another area where the concepts of ayurveda biology can be extensively utilized to improve our communication uh, with the patient as well as with the scientific world similarly we say about you know pathya or virutha aahara to the patient and there are many instances when uh, the patient asks what happens if we combine these two when we say you cannot combine this a and b uh, you know they ask what happens what is the problem when we combine this so we in, in our understanding we say that it causes vada pragoba or pitta pragoba or agni mandya but similarly if we can tell them that if a and b combines there forms as compound c which is not healthy to the body right that brings a lot of relevance to that advice or a lot of relevance and lot of awareness to the concept so such initiatives may be uh, is possible i strongly believe uh, by integrating uh, different mechanisms and different systems of body so as i told about this uh, criticism aspect constructive criticism see the concepts i mean uh, ayurveda you know it's a it's a science or it's a concept which is designed um, many thousands of centuries back so as students we know that there are certain things especially the in in numbers numerals that uh, which is not relevant today when we understood the body with the help of technology few numbers which is explained in ayurveda ayurvedic textbooks became irrelevant so there are such certain areas that we need to look with a critical lens with the help of um, modern biology biochemistry etc wherein we need to refine those concepts and uh, there is i think there is no shame in saying that there are certain concepts we need to redesign or you know reconceptualize in ayurveda and this is one area uh, which i personally feel has got a lot of potential and similarly you know this is one area that uh, we face a lot of criticism on that is heavy metal contamination in ayurvedic products i'm saying this from the angle of an industry point of view so when we were discussing in tdu uh, there were discussions regarding uh, how this heavy metal contamination or the possibility of its health effects how the proper awareness can be brought among uh, the public uh, with the help of technology regarding whether it is really harmful or to a certain extent it is useful beyond that it could be harmful so these are areas of constructive criticism similarly connecting the dots i mean as i told earlier there is a disconnect between uh, understanding the ayurvedic uh, mechanisms and the you know modern mechanism so this is a confidence building exercise i believe if we can connect the dots between various concepts Uh, a lot of confidence can be built a lot of confidence can be built among the young ayurveda doctors especially and also integrating systems this is a buzzword now uh, we hear about integrating ayurveda integrating ayurveda with neurology integrating ayurveda with infertility all those things are happening i think the integration should start with the basic understanding it's not at the top of the level it has to start with basic understanding then it has to go to the level of you know pathological processes then into the disease mechanisms and then into the treatment so for that integration to happen i think the starting point uh, has to be uh, a, a process like ayurveda biology exploration of ayurveda through biological concepts so these are the few uh, important areas which i felt uh, could add a lot of value to ayurveda moving ahead and uh, when it comes to specific areas i'll start with research so uh, a graduate who has an exposure on ayurveda biology uh, in a course with something that uh, similar to what tdu does i think as uh, somebody who has a research institute we feel that we can bring in a lot of conceptual relevance when it comes to taking up new projects and sharpening the hypothesis because this is one thing that many researchers have told that just because our hypothesis was not very strong or not very particular uh, we couldn't expand the scope of the work so sharpening the hypothesis uh, is a real potential then restructuring the methods uh, you know it's debatable whether uh, ayurveda should have a unique way of uh, research methodology a uh, customized methodology 
or it should adopt from the Western research methodologies. Now, when we say today to the scientific world that we need a unique method uh, of research methodology, they are not very receptive. At least in our experience, we are not very receptive. But if we integrate the concepts of Ayurveda biology and then present to them, saying that, yes, this is the reason why Ayurveda requires a very unique or a very standardized, uh, I mean, a very customized research protocol, I think it adds a lot of value. Similarly, integrating technology. Uh, now we have, uh, we are having a lot of avenues uh, to integrate technology and multi-layered discussions. I mean, the discussion that usually happens uh, along with the outcomes of a research project, it can be widened. The scope of this discussion can be widened if there is a good uh, knowledge base about, especially about cellular biology or molecular biology, I feel. Also, this is something that I feel uh, that thinking beyond statistics, see, uh, no uh, harm to statistics, statistics is a wonderful science, but I think since ours is a very unique, very subjective way of uh, understanding the body, I think there should be avenues to think beyond the statistical relevance of a project, of a research project. And I think the exposure to Ayurveda biology is must, and it will add a lot of value to think beyond statistics. Now on a clinical front, um, I think the most important aspect as far as uh, my exposure, limited exposure to Ayurveda biology is understanding the samprapti. You know, as an Ayurvedic physician, we, we seldom focus on the name or uh, the diagnosis part, but it is very important to understand what went wrong in the patient. So when you look at the samprapti, understanding the samprapti is very important to critically analyze the symptoms just like we say the network pharmacology, I think the, the, there should be a symptom complex understanding. How this complex set of symptoms happens together. If it has to happen together, there should be a central pathology to it. That is a samprapti. How will we understand that samprapti? Because tigilsa at the end is nothing but samprapti vikhatana. You have to break that pathophysiology. So to break that pathophysiology, you should have a clear understanding. What went wrong at the level of cells or what went wrong at the level of hormones or whatever it is. So to understand the samprapti is a very critical aspect. Then application of diagnostics. Of course, uh, we need to connect the symptoms many a times with the diagnostics, like a blood report with the symptom. So for that also, you need to understand the biochemistry. You need to understand how the body works. Then awareness of etiology. And I say the awareness of etiology, you know, uh, it is more towards the wellness aspects of Ayurveda. So like uh, we say, you know, sitting, Ayurveda says that sitting idle for a long time could be an uh, etiological factor for uh, Prameha. So that is something that we can very easily connect. Like there is no need of, there, there is no utilization of energy that can lead to diabetes, which is clearly proved. But there are some other etiological factors, which is not that easy to connect with the disease mechanism. So if we can understand that etiological process, what is the impact of that etiology at the cellular level? Or is it going to change the basic mechanism of physiology that is going to cause the disease? I think it adds a lot of value in preventive medicine. Also, the targeted application of medicines. I think this is one area that uh, I understood when I had a brief interaction with uh, the doctors who have done this course, especially what they told us, you know, there was an attempt earlier to write a medicine for a symptom. So if a patient is presenting with three to four symptoms, there was an you know habit of writing three to four medicines for each symptom or like one medicine for each symptom. But after understanding this science in a much wider aspect, they were able to you know connect to a central pathology that could be the cause for these all symptoms. And that will help us to minimize or use the medicines in a much targeted way. And uh, coming to the industrial aspect, you know, process validation. I, I put this as the first point because um, See, Ayurvedic processes, we say all are extraction processes and um, the methods that we use are few centuries old, right? So if we can develop with the understanding of how these medicines act in the body, if we can develop some innovative methodologies to, you know, restructure the processes or even validate the existing processes, I think there is a huge scope to scale up this uh, Ayurvedic medicine industry. And... Similarly, with new product development, of course, that is a very wide area. And um, I'm sure after going through the you know basic syllabus of uh, 
the understanding ayurveda biology you know connecting ayurveda and biology i think this is a very core area uh, we're in you know compared to an ayurvedic doctor the one who understands ayurveda with the lens of an you know a biology or a chemistry will have a potential to target or to understand the medicines which is going to be the targeted ones so when it comes to new product development two two approaches are there that we generally follow uh, one is for the classical medicine uh, you know development classical new product development is more focused on you know network pharmacology how uh, this combination is going to act viria vipaga all those aspects but when it comes to the patent products or the new range of products that is being developed uh, the approach is uh, more towards you know you have to get a particular result if you need to get that particular result this is a particular this is a set of changes that has to happen in the body if that set of changes has to happen in the body what should this medicine contain right so such approach innovative approaches is being able to implement we are able to implement such approaches with the help of you know um, the candidates who have an exposure in this um, biological aspects so uh, this is a quote uh, which is there in that uh, ayurvedic biology decadal uh, you know vision statement which says that when a system of medicine serves millions of people and trains thousands of students as physicians science is obliged to investigate whatever is testable in its concepts and practices failure to do so would impoverish both science and traditional medicine and call into question their social relevance so i think this is a wake up call for both ayurveda doctors as well as the scientists who are interested you know to test the concepts and practices so as i said earlier there are certain sets of practices that we just blindly follow and at the same time there are some practices that goes under the lens of scientific understanding and i think this is a very valid statement and this is an eye opener for all of us to you know understand that there is a huge potential as far as understanding the ayurvedic concepts further are concerned so uh, with this i feel that uh, ayurveda biology uh, gives an opportunity to understand think and act with a new dimension as explained earlier and it has a potential to create an innovative and contemporary platform for the growth of ayurveda whether it is on a research aspect or on a product and services aspect it has got a tremendous um, opportunity and integration at a basic level is must for integration on a wider level as we explained earlier and i think ayurvedic i mean biological concepts can not only bridge the research methods but also the clinical practice when it and I, as i explained about the samprapti complex or even the panchakarma um, relevance so there is a lot of relevance when it comes to clinical practice also so um, i mean with this i will uh, conclude my uh, presentation so one core concept that i would like to share with you before i finish is that see ayurvedic textbooks or ayurvedic principles they are originally written in a sanskrit language the one big challenge that we face now is lack of command in sanskrit and because of this lack of command in sanskrit we are just following the translations or you know the explanations that have come later and with due respect to all those translations uh, there can be some some lacking you know connecting bridges between them so if we can use it it's not that easy to learn sanskrit again and you know create a generation of people who can go back and learn ayurveda in its original way but i think technology can be used to an extent uh, to take these concepts closer to the reality and it gives a lot of significance and you know interest uh, towards ayurveda from a global platform and uh, ayurveda biology i feel is a very important and very potent tool in this uh, direction uh with this i uh, conclude my presentation thank you uh, once again i thank uh, dr vishnu prasad and officials of uh, tdu for giving me an opportunity to share a few insights about uh, or my views about this thing thank you thank you uh, uh, dr yadav it was uh, really